Hi, here we are again, Rob Bryanton and the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Uh, today's entry is dated August 28th, 2008, and you can read along with it if you go to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension blog. That's at tenthdimension.com slash blog. And uh, today's entry is called David J. Brown and Psychedelics. And in honor of the psychedelics topic, we got ourselves a nice little Mandela kind of a thing happening here, which uh, Jason created for us, uh, which is actually built from uh, the background uh, that's behind me in, in uh, real life. So it's uh, another one of those things where you take something organic and do something interesting to it. Thank you, Jason, for that. I'm going to start out today uh, quoting from David J. Brown, uh, who uh, just wrote something... Uh, really, really nice about uh, my project, and this is what he says. Rob Bryanton's Imagining the Tenth Dimension is one of the most brilliantly conceived and mind-stretching books that I've ever encountered. Bryanton presents a uniquely compelling model of our ten-dimensional universe that allows one to visualize and grasp the topography of the higher dimensions in a step-by-step -step manner. This is must-reading for anyone interested in the philosophy of physics, shamanic exploration, or the nature of reality. And that's David J. Brown said that. He's the author of Conversations on the Edge of the Apocalypse, uh, a book I've talked about here before. How's that for a recommendation? I'm thrilled. I've quoted from David's writing a number of times in this blog, and would certainly have referenced his material during the writing of my book if I'd been lucky enough to come across it back then. I've talked many times about the exciting synchronicities of ideas that happen across time and space, and how those connections can be so easily integrated into the way of visualizing reality that I've come up with for this project. For me, reading conversations on the edge of the apocalypse was a revelation, because there were so many experts interviewed in that book who were discussing concepts which I raised in my own book, even though at that point I was unfamiliar with many of those experts and their writing. Now, David J. Brown holds a master's degree in psychobiology from New York University. And some of you may know his name from the excellent article he wrote for Scientific American Mind, published in December 2007, called Psychedelic Healing. And this article was about the renewed interest in the use of psychedelics in the treatment of addiction, depression, and other mental disorders. In one of my blogs about my song, Seven Levels, I discussed some of the connections between psychedelics, mysticism, and the number seven, last blog entry in Twisted Dimensions, I returned to the idea from string theory that our universe might be embedded in a seven-dimensional brain. That's B-R-A-N-E, of course. Since my project also attaches a significance to the seventh dimension as being the place where the wave function of all possible expressions for our particular universe are unfolded into what we can think of as a point, I'm fascinated to see the connections between these many threads. I've also been fascinated to be contacted by people who have experience with various psychedelics who tell me that the way of visualizing how our reality is constructed gives them a model for understanding and interpreting their experiences. At the 10th Dimension Forum, there's an alternate, altered states section where I've heard from people who have taken LSD, salvia divinorum, DMT, magic mushrooms, and so on. In my book and my song, From the Corner of My Eye, I've also explored other connections between disorders of the mind, perceptual tricks of vision, and how they might be revealing information to us about the underlying structures of reality. From over at Dr. Clifford Pickover's Reality Carnival, which recently posted a link to my project, thank you, Reality Carnival, here's an entry about a surprising affliction known as Charles Bonnet syndrome, in which otherwise normal people suffering from the generation of their visual systems begin witnessing strange creatures. No psychedelics involved. And of course, if you're reading along with the blog, please do click on that link there and you'll be able to see uh, that article, which is really interesting. Now, there's a YouTube user known as Fourth Drake, who just posted a 1997 BBC documentary on psychedelic science. And I'm linking to that from my blog as well this time. It's well worth watching if you have an hour. And I was also, I was particularly interested in part three of this video. So uh, in the blog, I did uh, post a link just to that one 10 minute section. Uh, that section includes uh, some shots uh, from uh, 
a scene where people are using a psychoactive tea preparation known as ayahuasca in Brazilian culture. And the idea that a mainstream religious movement of just plain folks meet weekly in Brazil to commune with these psychedelic visions and treat it not as entertainment but a deeply spiritual experience is something I find significant. As another interesting bit of synchronicity, it turns out that my province, Saskatchewan here in Canada, was where some groundbreaking research into the clinical use of psychedelics was performed in the 50s and early 60s. A fact I mentioned previously in my blog entry, seeing the big picture from 40 kilometers up. Dr. Abram Hoffer, one of the Saskatchewan doctors who conducted those studies back then, appears in the BBC documentary we were just talking about. And he laments how research was shut down in the 60s because of a fearful rejection by the governments of the time of all psychoactive drugs. Dr. Hoffer talks about the surprising successes of programs where, in clinical trials, they gave their patients a few small doses of LSD in controlled and peaceful and peaceful environments. For instance, in one study, about half of the alcoholics who received this treatment program said the experience changed their lives and their desire to abuse alcohol was eliminated. As we can see in the above BBC documentary and in David J. Brown's Scientific American article, that research is slowly resuming now. Which leads me back to David J. Brown's wonderful recommendation from my project. Thank you, David. I'm grateful. David's reference to shamanic exploration in the context of the lovingly administered drugs documented or treatments documented by Dr. Hoffer or the peaceful ayahuasca communions in Brazil is very connected to what I'm thinking about with this project. Finding ways through the power of the mind to transcend the four-dimensional world and perceive the extra dimensions that create our reality. So here to close is a video of me sitting at my old, nicely out of tune piano, singing one of the 26 songs I've attached to this project. And in the final analysis, it's all about connections. From Rob Bryanton and the Imagining Tenth Dimension blog, enjoy the journey. Connections.